And so we got the first pilot out of B course and he hadn't done tanking. And so this, the, the broader Air Force context this time is there's this very significant fighter pilot shortage. It's been happening for years. Uh, they had come up with different task force and stuff on how they were going to try to treat some of the losses of, of the experience level leaving the Air Force, um, as well as how are they going to increase the pipeline to get students through to into the fighter squadron. So that's kind of where we are, broad picture uh, in the Air Force. So we're starting to get these students from pilot training or from the F-16B course who haven't done some of these fundamental uh, things that, honestly, the, the CAF, the combat squadrons aren't prepared to do like tanking like none of us has ever taken the back seat of an aircraft that's a very specific uh skill set that only instructors are given in the basic course you know at luke air force base or holloman air force base so here we're getting this these guys and they don't have to do it from you know a two seat f-16 it's not required but there's no way for us to know whether this guy is going to be ready to do it in his single seat aircraft or if he's going to need extra instruction and there's nobody there that can give that extra instruction anyway so it was a problem that we you know we were a little bit shocked that that was going to be put on the lap of the combat air forces uh, and we weren't sure you know exactly how to deal with it the first couple guys that went through it ended up not being an issue and you know you've experienced plenty of times tanking like it can be a smooth great day where things are going really well for not only for the f-16 pilot but also for the KC 135 pilot and the boom operator. Right. Um, and so it's not, you know, not a terribly big issue. Um, or it can be circumstances that are incredibly challenging, like weather, uh, bad weather, bad boom operator, you know, all those things can contribute to that. So uh, it just, like you said, the Swiss cheese model, like the first couple of times there wasn't an issue, but, you know, in this particular case, as we're going to see as we talk about it, you know, it, that was actually a significant issue. It didn't directly affect probably the way, or at least it wasn't directly linked to when he struck his uh, left strut. Um, but it definitely played into his the, his mental processing after the failed refueling. Uh, so my point being like the broad picture of the Air Force is we're starting to rush things, or at least that's the feeling that the, the CAF has, the combat Air Forces had, is that we're rushing things on the training side of the house and some of that slack is needs to now be picked up by the the combat squadrons who honestly aren't they're not made to do that kind of stuff they're not necessarily prepared or have the right syllabuses or syllabi in place to to do it so it brings up some some interesting questions yeah i think that's a really good point and i remember specifically the the director of operations i had when i first showed up to shaw so brand new dude out of the b course he was a weapons school instructor, one of the best instructors I've ever had. Um, and I think he was like the weapons school instructor of the year, like two times in a row. So he knows everything about tactics and how to fly the F-16. And I was sitting in a debrief with someone else and he's like looking at their tapes and he goes, yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's like a, that'd be a pretty new guy thing to do. Like he just, like he was at such a different <laughs> level, such an advanced level that the basic stuff. And I could say this, I mean, the same thing that's apples and oranges right but if i had to go teach someone to fly a cessna right now and i've done them like there's so many things that i don't know about this small plane that i i can't teach you that just are not applicable in the stuff that i fly today so um yeah it's it's interesting that that's been transposed but it also compounding factor i think the tempo of ops like that hasn't changed it's, in fact it's ramped up um and I almost like draw a mirror. So you know, we had a mishap in our squadron when I was deployed in, in 2014. And the events leading up to that, you know, to the deployment, everything was rushed. We're trying to get so many people through qualifications. I imagine that had to be somewhat the same scenario here, but magnified with the fact that they're behind because COVID has ramped down flying operations for a few months, right? 